self-regulation though, that's today's topic, the ability to manage and appropriately channel your emotion. Now, this doesn't mean that we put our emotions on absolute lockdown or we hide our true feelings, like we lie to other people in some way that I don't really feel anything. Uh, you're gonna feel things and it's okay to feel things. Uh, but it does mean that we are waiting for the right time and the right place and looking for the right way to express those emotions. So self-regulation is all about expressing emotions appropriately. Emotions often result in impulsive behavior. There's something that takes over and otherwise uh, a person who may be thinking clearly one moment, something happens, there's an emotion and there's an impulse and actions are taken in, uh, with, with this impulsiveness. And so we could also say the self-regulation is just learning how to manage our impulses at any given time that are driven by those emotions. So we're gonna look at five elements of self-regulation. The first element is that of self-control. Now self-control is not masking or hiding your emotions. We already talked about that a little bit. But it is recognizing and controlling them appropriately. This means not making a rash decision or overreacting in a, to a situation. Instead, it's remaining calm and rational. It leads to being able to make balanced decisions based on what is really important, not just how we feel at the time. Self-control allows us to do exactly what it says, take control for a moment so that we can see what is really happening and not just simply what we are feeling. And so that is the first element is self-control. Uh, we've been there before, right? Uh, there's a strong emotion that takes over and we've done it, we've seen others do it. They do things and say things in the moment and they usually have to go back and apologize. We know what it's like to have to go back and apologize that we were not self-controlled in that moment. We let an impulse take over. We said things and did things based on our feelings first without taking time to see what does this? What is this feeling I'm feeling, number one, and how does it relate to the overall context? Is it even as big as I think it is? And sometimes they are big feelings, but we still have to take that moment to make sure we, we know exactly what is happening and not just being blinded by those impulses. Uh, there's trustworthiness. Trustworthiness is your ability to maintain your integrity. It means ensuring that what you do is consistent with your personal values. You don't let your emotions obliterate your values. We all have things that are very important to us. We, we have a code of ethics that we want to live by. We, we have things that are um, core values, if you will. And it's good to take some time, maybe write those down. What are my core values? And am I going to self-regulate so that when I have these strong emotions arise, am I able not to betray my, my very core values? And again, we see this happen all the time where someone acts in a way that is very unlike they normally act. They just had this impulse that took over and you have to go back through and apologize. It's probably best to take stock of your core values before there's an eruption of emotion rather than after. Because if you do it before, there probably won't be the eruption of emotions that are expressed inappropriately. This also includes how you treat others. You are trustworthy to act ethically for yourself despite deep emotions, but you are also trustworthy to treat others ethically as well. It means people can trust you to approach you at any given time. They're not wondering, how is this person gonna react this time? How will this news strike them this time? That there is some sort of steadiness in you where people can trust you that they're not going to be um, uh, the object of an emotional outburst. Um, you are trustworthy to approach without fear. That's really the essence of it. People aren't afraid to approach you. If, if you constantly realize that people are walking into the room, kind of being these emotional weathermen, you know, trying to take the temperature of where things are, or walking on eggshells around you, that tells you that you've lost some trustworthiness, that you're not self-regulating as you ought. People ought not come into your presence just wondering how you're gonna act. There should be some sort of code of ethic to yourself 
and code of ethic to others and take a moment, see what those are and make sure that you don't uh, betray the, your, your very core values with an emotional outburst. This goes together a little bit with conscientiousness. We are conscientious. It means to take responsibility for who you are and taking responsibility for what you do. If you feel the emotion of not doing a good job or someone even challenges the work that you do, uh, you, the, the level of defensiveness that can arise within us and all the accompanying emotions that come along with that uh, can cause us to do some things that are not going to be productive. Uh, first and foremost, it is lashing out emotionally and blaming others for uh, an apparent lack on your own part. Uh, the fact is, none of us are perfect. We're going to mess up. We're not going to do our job perfectly. And we ought to receive that. We ought to hear it, accept it, own it, try to move past it, apologize when necessary. But it is not going to be a trustworthy thing for you. It's not going to be a safe thing for others. You're not going to be um, faithful to your own core values. You're not going to be under self-control if at every criticism is met with a defensiveness and emotional outburst and lashing out at others saying it's everybody else's fault that this is happening. So this is what it means to be conscientious. Own things. Uh, don't try to pass them off or you're going to fall apart because someone just might say something uh, to you about your job performance. It's okay. We're not perfect. We're all trying to improve together and become better at what we do. Not only do you not lash out, but you also don't do the... Um, you don't take the actions in which you uh, withdraw fully and you quit and you take your ball and go home, so to speak. Uh, this isn't helpful either. You can self-regulate enough to truly own what is yours and plow forward for the good of yourself and for the good of others. Another area is adaptability. It's the ability to manage change. And this is big. A lot of people get very antsy when there's any amount of change. Not, nobody really enjoys change, for, especially for change's sake. Uh, we, we get into ruts, we get into rhythms, and we like them. And when somebody uh, introduces something different or life changes on us, uh, we certainly get edgy. Uh, change is stressful and emotional, but we all know the other part of this. Change happens all the time. But somehow, even though change happens all the time, we always seem surprised when it does because we're kind of hoping against all hope that nothing will change. That's just not the world we live in. That's not the experiences we have. Change happens all the time. And so the faster that we can self-regulate enough to evaluate what is happening. Uh, sometimes we just see change and right away we, we don't care what's happening. It's just different. We don't like it. The faster that we can say, okay, there's a change. Let's see what that change is. Let's see what's really happening. Let's see what is the level of change that's really happening before we just react to change all by itself. So we, the faster that we can self-regulate towards evaluating what is happening, it is possible then to begin treating change as a challenging adventure rather than a problem, uh, something to just be attacked. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's going to happen, but can we self-regulate to take advantage of the situation, uh, to help others through the situation, rather than falling apart just because we don't like what's happening. And this is uh, akin to innovation. Uh, innovation, uh, it, it's, it's just not, it, it's, re, um, it's resisting the urge to shutting down, getting angry, or retreating to pout when novel ideas or approaches come your way. And so, Something happens where there's going to be a different way of doing something. And, and it's even worse when the old way of doing something is no longer available to you. You have to adapt to the change. You have to innovate. You have to think in a way that you never thought before. You have to engage in a process that you've never engaged in before. Uh, that can be nerve-wracking a little bit. Especially because we say, I'm going to try it once and it's going to go more slowly than I liked it. Or I won't be good at it. And uh, we don't like the feeling of being uh, slowed down. We don't like the feeling of not being good at something. But again, that goes back to being conscientious. Own it. It's okay. You're learning. Uh, you're going to be slow. You're going to be bad at something until you get a little bit better at it. Because hopefully this innovative way of doing things long term will be better for you in the situation uh, as you face other situations. This is a little bit like our sharks and dolphins uh, discussion that we had a couple years ago. 
is that sometimes when innovation or change comes our way, we can respond either like a shark or a dolphin. When a shark sees an obstacle, they attack it, they kill it, they get rid of it. And uh, sometimes if something changes in the way you do things, it's not the way you like to do them. Sometimes it's, we, we have this emotional response. We want and we get angry and we want to kill the thing. We want to get it out of the way. Uh, rather than taking what I call a dolphin-like approach, dolphins are naturally curious. They're going to look at it. They're going to rotate it. Um, how do I get around this obstacle? Or how do I even use this obstacle uh, to my advantage? And acting in a smart way, in a self-controlled way, something in which you are still faithful to your core values, not acting in an ugly way towards something. You're conscientious. You're going to go ahead and try hard and make sure that this works. And you're going to adapt and you're going to innovate. Uh, but that does take some self-regulation to be able to face innovation without spiraling uh, in your emotions just because it's... It's just not fun when things first come out. It's not fun to adapt to something. I think we all go through this on our computers and our phones and they get the latest and greatest innovations in our operating system. And we like, well, I like the old way of doing it. Why are you changing it on me? And then especially when those old ways become obsolete, you just have to adapt. But I dare say, if you look at the first iteration of Windows versus the latest iteration of Windows, the latest one's just better. It just is. Even though you like Windows 3.1, Windows 10 has to happen at some point. And uh, so long-term things do get better, but it is hard to adjust. So learn to see them for what they are. What is really happening? Is this really something that is really going to help me in the long run? Uh, let me see if I can self-regulate uh, so that I can be innovative. So those are just a few practical steps we take. In the process of self-regulation, uh, some things you can do, uh, count or pause. Sometimes it's good when you still when you feel that emotion welling up in you, just start counting down from 10 or 5, depending on what situation you're in. But let's just say it's a pretty quick reaction. You only have five seconds. Just take that five. Try to figure out what emotion am I really feeling? Four, three, why am I feeling it? Is it good? Is this worth having a big response to? And just taking a little bit of time before you offer your first words or your first action. Sometimes you realize that five seconds isn't going to be long enough. Sometimes you realize this is a pretty strong emotion and it's okay to withdraw. It's not good to stomp off. It's not good to uh, say, um, I, I'm, I'm leaving and, and huff, but just ask for a moment. Hey, can I have just a moment and just withdraw calmly and politely, collect yourself, uh, say, I need to get a breath of air real quick, or I just need to think through, those, or those are really important words you said, uh, or those are really uh, difficult words you said. Can I just take a moment to process that? It's okay, uh, and it may seem embarrassing, maybe just that you need a moment, but that's a whole lot better than reacting and flying off the handle or having an emotion you wish you didn't have, especially betraying any core values and, and making yourself not trustworthy in front of people because you've lashed out at them. Uh, taking time to pray, to meditate, and just take that quiet time. Sometimes you hear something and it may not be exactly what you thought you heard. If you're having an emotional response to some words that were said or an action taken, sometimes it's good just to repeat those words back to that person. I thought I heard you say this, or I thought I saw you did this. Is that true? It allows you to know that you're hearing it right, you're observing it correctly. And sometimes it may help for that other person to hear what they said. You know, did you say anything? They may say, well, I said that, but that's not what I really meant. And it gives them an opportunity to kind of back off the statement. Uh, that is always a great move. When someone says something that's controversial or says something that could be hurtful to you, or maybe they were responding emotionally, allowing them to say, can you say that again? I want to make sure I heard it. It gives them a chance to maybe change those words or even say, well, it's not what I really meant. Um, that's a lot better than reacting back to them and th then you're in a conflict. And at that point, eating crow doesn't happen. It just ends up being nonsense piled upon nonsense piled upon nonsense. And, it, and nothing is helpful at that point. So sometimes if you, you just need a moment to say, did I hear you correctly or did I observe you correctly? Uh, I just want to make sure I know what's happening. If, and if you heard him correctly and you observed it correctly, then I take you back to counting and withdrawing or praying at that point. But at the end of the day, self-regulation is about identifying, first of all, the self-awareness, identifying it, and then taking a moment and deciding ahead of time, how am I going to now react to that particular situation? How am I going to channel this emotion that I'm feeling that in such a way that will be helpful in uh, my own, for my own reputation and my own functionality and also helpful in the lives of the people around me?
So that is self-regulation and uh, looking forward to the next time together, we'll be looking at social skills and how to develop needful social skills as we interact with other people. I well, hope you have a great uh, rest of the meeting and I look forward to seeing you again.